Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Jesper Office and on this channel here we talk about skincare, hair care and all those sort of things that are supposed to make it good for a really long time. And uh, today I thought I would uh, talk a little bit about something I would say that is um, essential if you like to uh, look uh, after your skin from uh, the inside. And uh, if you look at me, uh, then uh, I can say that uh, in less than two months time I will be uh, 49. And uh, the things that I have to, spoken about uh, on this channel here over the years is uh, actually something that I do and if I stop doing something I will let you know. So at the moment I'm actually uh, experimenting uh, with uh, something that is called uh, flavonoids and uh, here uh, today we will mainly talk about uh, something called a physetin and uh, that is a, a flavonoid which is uh, an antioxidant and uh, it is also something that is called an senolytic or that means that it's basically it uh, helps your body get rid of senescent cells and uh, senescent cells that is uh, basically old cells that uh, you would like to get rid of but they can actually linger around and the older uh, you get the more difficult for the body it will be uh, to get rid of them and it can cause all sort of a havoc in the body and uh, some will say that it is the root cause of something like a cancer and that sort of thing it doesn't mean that just because you get older you will always uh, get cancer but just as you get older we have this sort of issue with the senescent cells so at the moment something like physicin that is something that is being looked into uh, in relation to if it can help with something like a uh, cancer but uh, now uh, when I'm taking it, I'm just taking it in order to help my body to get rid of these uh, senescent cells. But uh, there is a little issue and that is uh, how should you actually take it. So uh, that is basically what we will be uh, talking about today. Because uh, there are various uh, things you can do in order to make sure that the bioavailability of it is uh, as best as it can basically be. Because uh, a lot of these uh, supplements, if you just take them like uh, in a pill form and that sort of thing, it's just your body might not take up enough of it or you might waste a lot of it. So uh, here today we are going to talk a little bit about uh, these uh, supplements that are not water soluble. So when something is not water soluble it's really difficult for the body to take it up. So something like a physetin and also something like a quercetin and something called muricetin, they are all sort of like uh, in the same group. So the difference between them is basically where the uh, hydroxy groups they are placed. But uh, apart from that they look very much uh, the same and they are all not water soluble so that means that you need to dilute it or dissolve it in um, oil but uh, just dissolving it oil can be sort of like yeah it's better than water definitely but it's still not super good so one thing you can do is actually you can use something like the uh, propylene glycol and uh, that is something you should not take too much of so a person like me I am about uh, hopefully about 70 kilos I might be a little bit more but I would like to think that it's not more than 70 kilos so the thing here is that I will be taking about 2 milliliters a day as a maximum. So you shouldn't take more than that. The FDA, they have some sort of like a limit to how much you should take it per day. But this sort of thing is basically in a lot of uh, food, a lot of uh, fast food. So you get a lot of it anyway. So there is a, a limit from the FDA. But the point here is that if you just take a little bit of it, then it will help you to um, dissolve uh, this uh, physicin uh, a lot better than if you were just using water or oil. So uh, what I'm doing is that I'm basically using something like a respiratorium as well and I use uh, quercetin and I use uh, a little bit of muricetin and then uh, as I said uh, we are talking about uh, physetin uh, today. So how are you supposed to sort of like make it bioavailable for the body? Well, the thing is, as I said, uh, it needs to be uh, diluted in something that is an oil. So if you use a uh, propylene glycol, and I mean, at the end I will show you a recipe of uh, what I'm doing at the moment. So I have uh, basically something that will be looking like this, so sort of like a very, very uh, yellowish uh, stuff. But uh, what I do is actually I take some of the uh, respiratory. I don't take that much of the respiratory because if you take too much of that, it can be very annoying on your digestive system so you really don't want that but again I will tell you later how much I'm actually taking uh, per day the thing is uh, I take the uh, propylene glycol first and then I take the um, resveratrol and then I dilute that first in that and then uh, basically I just add uh, the physetin, I add the myositin and I add uh, the uh, quercetin to that now, we have spoken about uh, some other things uh, over the years of so amino acids and uh, there I would like to say that something like uh, leucine that is something that is uh, really great in order to stimulate your body to grow muscles, particularly if you get older. So that is uh, unfortunately also something that is difficult to dilute in water and that means basically that uh, you would like to add it in this uh, concoction as well because you get a lot more out of it. But now uh, leucine you need to take it together with the glycine because that means that your body will be able to take it up even better. But the glycine that is just basically water soluble so it doesn't be 
mean that much but it's good to, to take it uh, together with this you can just uh, add it to the mix so uh, what I do uh, after that is I also take something like a Q10 and the Q10 that we have spoken about before and that needs a hot water in order to be um, able uh, to be taken up by uh, your body. So in this uh, sense here I will be adding it uh, to uh, the oil concoction as well because it basically is um, fat uh, soluble as well or oil soluble but it likes uh, to have some heat in order to be really uh, dissolvable. So uh, what I will be doing uh, when I take my drinks, so uh, this one here is actually it's warm and that's because I add a, a little bit of uh, olive oil first. So after I use the uh, propylene uh, glycol, then uh, I add all these uh, things here, and then uh, I add uh, a good splash of uh, olive oil. And I use basically, uh, this is one from Waitrose, an organic uh, one, so a, a virgin uh, olive oil. And I add uh, a bit of that, and again I will let you know uh, in the end how much I'm actually uh, adding. So after I've been adding that, then I will take basically a boiling water. You can just leave it a little bit if you don't want too hot water. But uh, basically what it is, is that you have uh, an amount of uh, oil up to here. So this is a 250 milliliter bottle. So oil up to about here. And then uh, I add the water and then I shake it. But then water and oil, it will not really mix well together. And that's why I'm using something else. And I've just uh, read about that uh, because uh, there was actually uh, someone that was asking, you know, they were talking about uh, something like a quercetin. It's difficult to take it off and that sort of thing. But there's actually a company that have made uh, a pill where they're mixing a, a quercetin. They are mixing it with uh, something like lecithin. And that is maybe uh, something, you know, from a chocolate, it's used in chocolate and that sort of thing. So it is uh, basically uh, an emollient and uh, it's something from egg and you can get it in um, sunflower. I have it from sunflower and you can get it from soy as well. Uh, but I use the one from uh, sunflower and uh, what it does is basically it mixes uh, water and oil. But another very crucial thing, and that is that when you have uh, your oil uh, concoction and uh, the propylene uh, glycol and you have uh, the hot water then uh, these um, molecules of the quercetin and fisetin and um, resveratrol and uh, the myricetin it will be so like it's swimming around but what it really would like to do is to get hold of each other again so all these small molecules they will attach themselves to each other and that is not great because then your body cannot take it up so little thing what it does is that when you have your heart concoction then uh, these molecules they are all around so the lecithin goes actually in between all these molecules and that means that it stops the molecules from binding together and that means that when you are taking it then uh, you will actually be uh, able to take these um, supplements up in a much better way than if you were not using it. So the point uh, of this uh, drink here you can see it looks basically a little bit like um, very liquid uh, mayonnaise or dressing or something like that and that's because usually you are using a little thing in uh, mayonnaise and the dressings and that uh, sort of thing. The lecithin in mayonnaise comes from the egg yolks. So uh, here you have this sort of like a liquid mayonnaise uh, thing and that basically means that uh, you can drink it when it's sort of like lukewarm. Uh, I wouldn't let it go cold, it's just drink it like it's lukewarm. And then uh, your body will uh, be able to take it up uh, a whole lot better. So that is what I've been doing for, let's see, maybe a month's time or something like that. And uh, I would say that if you cannot get hold of the fisetin and the muricetin, those two things are a little bit to the expensive side of the say, then uh, I would just go for something like a quercetin. But it's because I think that if you take it uh, this way here, it will basically along the way do a lot of uh, what the fisetin is doing as well. So this synolytic uh, activity that the fisetin has, quercetin has that as well. And I suspect that muricetin does that as well. But quercetin, that is the most uh, inexpensive uh, one of uh, those uh, flavonoids. So I would say definitely go for quercetin if you cannot uh, afford uh, the other uh, things. So here and I have mixed uh, all the this stuff here and uh, it is uh, still uh, lukewarm. So basically just shake it up. So this one here that is uh, for two people basically. Uh, I like to make it for two people because I take half of it and my husband takes the other part of it. And uh, I will uh, make uh, another video later uh, where I'll be talking a little bit more about uh, quercetin and fisetin and muricetin but mainly quercetin uh, in relation to his uh, condition which is a genetic condition called uh, mutonic dystrophy and uh, how it is actually going in and how it is helping with that in the sense of it's going in and do some stuff or the uh, DNA levels or RNA and that sort of thing, but uh, that will be uh, another video. So if you have a mutual dystrophy, you definitely uh, would like to see uh, that video. 
But uh, so far, uh, this is uh, the drink I have been taking um, for, I think, uh, about a month's time now uh, in this way with the lecithin as well, apart from uh, taking uh, the other amino acids that I've been uh, talking about uh, before. So I would say definitely uh, a concoction like this and then uh, together with something like a uh, NAC, uh, that would basically be uh, what I would say is um, essential for uh, maintaining your body best uh, possible. So yes, how does this one uh, taste? Well, actually, it's interesting because it tastes like sweet banana, basically. I don't know why, but it does. Mm. Yeah, it's not that bad. It basically tastes a little bit like raw banana mixed with a very sort of like a mature banana. It's a, a bit odd. I think it's something with the olive oil and the uh, guys and another sort of thing. So yeah, in that sense, uh, it doesn't taste uh, that bad. But uh, of course, uh, we've spoken about amino acids uh, over the years, and some of them they don't taste that. Nice. It tastes absolutely awful. Like, not it, it tastes absolutely uh, awful, and stinks. So I have enough uh, sulfur. So uh, this stuff here, I would say that um, that's a great thing uh, to take. But I would not uh, add the NAC or any of uh, sort of like acidic or very. Um, alkaline uh, amino acid to the mix because uh, you then risk that you will be altering the structure of these uh, flavonoids so as we've spoken about it with the cocoa uh, powder so i wouldn't do that so uh, yeah in that sense i would say uh, something like this that is really something that should uh, boost uh, longevity and longevity and all that sort of thing it should be good for your health and uh, i have taken it and it definitely i will say that i have seen that my skin has responded very positively uh, to it and it wasn't that my skin was very collapsed or anything like before because you can see that on my other videos but definitely i would say that has done something that is a positive uh, for my skin so yes if you would like to see more of this sort of videos please subscribe hit the bell and do all those things you can do in order to be notified when i upload more of this sort of videos thank you for watching see you bye